Hello and welcome. Security operatives rescue one of the two traditional rulers kidnapped in Imo State yesterday after trailing their abductors to a criminal hideout in Anambra State. The President of the Senate addresses perceptions about the legislature, says the Ninth Assembly is not a rubber stamp as he laments funding challenge. The Oba of Bini receives legal documents of the deed of transfer for the bronze cockerel and the Oba bronze head handed over to Nigeria in the UK. And the death toll from the tornadoes that swept through some states in the United States likely to surpass 100. Plus we'll have international news from our London studio. On business news tonight, federal government proposes legislation to appoint digital companies as value-added tax collectors for the Federal Inland Revenue Service as part of reforms in the new Finance Bill 2021. On sports news tonight, a redraw for the UEFA Champions League last 16 pits 13-time champions Real Madrid against French powerhouse Paris Saint-Germain. And from the nation's capital, Nigeria begins diplomatic process to reverse decisions including Nigeria on travel red list by some countries on account of the COVID-19 Omicron variant. One of the traditional rulers kidnapped in Okigwe local government area of Imo State yesterday, His Royal Highness Achon Dukwe, is now a free man. The rescue of the monarch of Ihube community followed a raid conducted by a joint security team that stormed criminal camps in Osu and Ihiala local government areas of Anambra state, where they also arrested 30 suspected kidnappers. The whereabouts of the other kidnapped traditional ruler of Ihite Ihube autonomous community, His Royal Highness Paul Obu, has not been made known. The gunman was said to have invaded the palaces around 12 a.m. on Sunday and abducted both monarchs and set their palaces ablaze. The incident happened 48 hours after a traditional ruler in Ata community in Njaba local government area, also of Imo State, was abducted and murdered. The traditional ruler of Mbutu community, who was also kidnapped last week, was rescued by the police on hurt on Saturday. I want to commend the security agencies in Imo State, the DSS, the Army, the Navy, the police, the civil defense, all of them, for putting their heads together and making sure that at least Imo people will come home to celebrate Christmas. It has been a very thing of worry, wondering how entire local government, like also local government, we have abandoned in the, in the hands of criminals and cannibals. From what we have seen, you will not agree with me that these are ordinary criminals and bandits who has no future, who has no plan, who are killing human beings and roasting human beings, eating human beings, cannibals. How else are we supposed to treat this kind of idiots if not to ensure that the law takes its course? Oftentimes we discuss our strategies and before they will be implemented, it is foiled by the group. Because of mutual suspicion, I think we have agreed to only discuss at the end of every operation. So I don't want to encourage security agencies to tell anybody how they intend to continue this uh, fight. But I know the new strategy is working and my government will give them every support they need to ensure that there is peace in Imo State, and then Imo people will be better off for it. Meanwhile, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Al-Khali Baba, has described the year 2021 as a challenging one, owing to threats to internal security by the activities of bandits, secessionists and kidnapping syndicates. To further tackle the menace, the police boss announced plans for the launch of more operational vehicles in 2022, while noting that the recruitment of 10,000 police constables is being worked on. He was speaking at a meeting with senior officers in Abuja, whom he asked to brace up for the challenges that the year 2022 may present ahead of the 2023 general elections. It's a few days to the end of the year, and for officers of the Nigeria Police Force, it's time for stock taking. The year has seen an increase in cases of insecurity, which came in the form of banditry, 
kidnappings and the activities of secessionists as well as Boko Haram members, which left many dead and properties worth millions of naira destroyed. At this meeting, the Inspector General of Police reminds senior officers to improve internal security during the festive period and in the new year, especially as the 2023 general election beckons. While appreciating all members of the board for these modest successes within the outgoing year, it is imperative to know that upcoming year could even be more challenging. This is because it is a year preceding the general election in the country, and hence it is anticipated that the political landscape will be charged in a manner that will further test our professional will and our professional competence. The Inspector General then sets an agenda for officers and men of the force. This will be closely followed by monitoring of the professional conduct as well as other innovations to boost the operational performances. Let me at this juncture once again remind you that my policy vision is built on the values of professionalism and the respect for the rule of law and citizens' rights. Therefore, you should continue to provide strategic leadership that will remain sensitive to issues of right violation and the excessive and unjustifiable use of authority. In furtherance to this, I charge you to strengthen your supervisory actions in ensuring that personnel under your command do not conduct themselves in any manner that will deepen the cross gap between the citizens and the police. While the police say it is making efforts to ensure that the nation's internal security is guaranteed in 2022 and in the years to come, Nigerians are being advised to provide credible information which will help them achieve the target. Staying with security, part of the solutions to security challenges facing the country may be the deployment of 5G network. And that's according to the Minister of Communication and Digital Economy, Issa Pantami, who says that the technology would help tackle the menace since it provides real-time services. He was speaking at the auction of a 5G network by the Nigerian Communications Commission in Abuja, noting that by 2022, Nigeria would have the largest fifth-generation coverage in Africa. Three firms, MTN Nigeria, Airtel Nigerian and Mafab Nigeria Communications Limited are participating in the auction. Nigeria as a country being the giant of Africa feels it is necessary for us to kickstart the process of 5G deployment. Let us not forget, and with all sense of humility as well, Nigeria has the largest digital economy in Africa. Nigeria has the largest telecommunications market in Africa. Nigeria has the largest internet subscribers in Africa. Nigeria has the largest broadband subscribers in Africa. And we hope that by 2022, Nigeria will have the largest 5G coverage in Africa. We try to study the 5G deployment and see how we can maximize its benefits. Firstly, we feel that if 5G is utilized effectively by our security institutions, it will go a long way in addressing many security challenges we have in Nigeria. Firstly, there are many benefits of 5G over 2G, 3G, and even 4G particularly the mutual authentication of its network. And 5G network is encrypted. So this will provide an avenue for our security institutions to leverage on the technology and deploy many emerging technologies in the country to handle the security challenges we are being confronted with. Away from security, the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has been speaking about what he calls an array of perceptions and misconceptions about the legislature, which he says serves as a buffer against tyranny. Senator Lawan, who restated that the Ninth Assembly cannot be a rubber stamp institution, noted that the image of the National Assembly has improved over the years based on the perception index studies, but also dogged with issues such as the annual budgetary allocation. Senator Lawan stated these while delivering a paper at the Maiden Distinguished Parliamentarian Lecture Series, 
organized by the National Institute of Legislative and Democratic Studies in Abuja. Lawmakers from the two chambers of the National Assembly, members of the executive and judiciary arms of government, as well as a former president of the Senate, Senator Ken Namani, converge on this hall for the Maiden Parliamentarians Lecture Series organized by the National Institute for Legislative and Democratic Studies. This lecture series has been initiated by the National Assembly as a biannual event to broaden legislative experience by bringing together eminent Nigerians, speakers, parliamentarians to share knowledge and encourage thoughts, provoking conversation on issues of national importance, especially those having relevance to the Nigerian legislature. As it stands, the present National Assembly is raising the bar by organizing something of this nature where people come to exchange or cross-fertilize ideas. President Muhammad Buhari, represented by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Mr. Boz Mustafa, commends the National Assembly for its contribution to national development. It remains a statement of fact that the legislature is the embodiment of the doctrine of popular sovereignty, which recognizes that the people are the source of all political power. The President of the Senate, Senator Ahmed Lawan, who is the lecturer, discusses the relationship between legislative mandate and public perception as it tries to clear the air around budgetary allocations for the National Assembly, allowances for lawmakers, constituency projects, among other issues. In the last four years, the percentage of the National Assembly budget in the federal budget ranged between 0.82 percent that was in 2021 or the current budget to 1.44 in 2019 percent of the federal government budget the total salary of a member of the senate is about 1.53 million 1.5 million naira and that of house of representatives is about 1.3 million naira the average office running cost for a senator is about 13 million naira while that of a member of the house of representatives is 8 million naira he also discloses that the National Assembly will pass the 2022 budget this week. Since 2019, we ensured that the preparation and presentation of the budget is done in such a way that we are able to pass before Christmas. By the grace of God, this legislative week, the budget for 2022 will be passed. Stakeholders at the event believe if sustained, the parliamentarian's lecture will, among other things, help to build public confidence in the legislature. Emperor Simon, Channels, Television News. To the judiciary now, a federal high court in Abuja has fixed December the 21st to hear all applications challenging the court's jurisdiction to hear the suit on the bid by the federal government to deduct $418 million from the allocation of the 36 state governments to fund the contractual obligations in the Paris Club refund along with the substantive matter. At the resumption of proceedings today, Justice Yangokuo refused to grant an injunctive order against the federal government brought by counsel to the governor's Sunday Ame, praying for an order not to allow the federal government to proceed with the deduction of their $418 million. Justice Ekwo declined the request on the grounds that the issue of jurisdiction should be entertained and resolved first. The grouse of the state governors is that they were not parties to a legal action, which resulted in a judgment that ordered the federal government to deduct the said money from the state's accounts, but the defendants objected to the request on the ground that a federal high court had earlier issued an order that the federal government should deduct the money. They are also challenging the jurisdiction of the court, pointing out since the earlier judgment was delivered by the same court more than four years ago, the governors have not deemed it fit to file an appeal against the judgment. In part two, after the break, Nigeria initiates diplomatic steps to reverse decisions such as the inclusion of the country on the red list of other countries. Plus, the Oba of Bini receives legal documents of the deed of transfer for the bronze cockerel and the Oba bronze head handed over to Nigeria in the UK, or coming up in a moment. Do join us again.
Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Channel's television, coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Security operatives rescue one of the two traditional rulers kidnapped in Imo State yesterday after trailing their abductors to a criminal hideout in Anambra State. President of the Senate addresses perceptions about the legislature, says the Ninth Assembly is not a rubber stamp as he laments funding challenge. The Oba of Bini receives legal documents of the deed of transfer for the bronze cockerel and the Oba bronze head handed over to Nigeria in the UK. And death toll from the tornadoes that swept through some states in the United States likely to surpass 100. Let's cross over to Abuja now. Here's Terry Ikumi. Terry? Hello, Ijoma. Nice to see you. Nigeria has initiated diplomatic steps to reverse decisions, such as the inclusion of Nigeria on the red list by other countries on account of the COVID-19 Omicron variant. Minister of Aviation, Mr. Hadi Sirika, representing the chairman of the Presidential Steering Committee, Mr. Boss Mustafa, stated this at an emergency briefing today, that the country is expecting a positive response within a week. Our correspondent, Gloria Omezioke, reports. Since the emergence of the Omicron COVID-19 variant, Nigeria has had countries like the United Kingdom, Canada and Saudi Arabia slam shut its travel doors against citizens, an action that has elicited mixed reactions. The Presidential Steering Committee is now instituting diplomatic action that it hopes will induce the right responses from these countries, stating further actions if not. Based on existing relationships, Nigeria has initiated diplomatic steps to make these countries reverse their course. This is ongoing in the interest of all parties concerned, and we expect that positive results would emerge within the next one week. The PSC also evaluated the development on the relationship between Nigeria and the UAE, and we are pleased to inform you that the position of the federal government is in line with the established ICAO protocols and the spirit of the bilateral air services agreement signed with the UAE. We strongly believe that they will respond and delist Nigeria. If not, it doesn't make any sense for us to continue to put our citizens to risk. We will take the necessary steps protect our citizens. Again, the aviation minister makes it clear that his office is yet to receive a purported letter currently circulating on the social media stating a travel restriction update from the UAE suspending the acceptance of passengers to the UAE. The social media letter that was written by them was released is yet to be on my desk as at 4 p.m. today. I've been in my office until now. I have not received it. And I cannot receive a letter direct from them. It ought to come through diplomatic channels. The vaccines will be destroyed in line with environmental protocols, according to the executive director of the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, you, Dr. Faisal Schwab. We are working with NAVDAC uh, to uh, schedule a date for when this destruction will take place. There are protocols that NAVDAC and the Abuja Environmental Protection Agency will have to go through. Uh, once all of those are aligned, we will communicate to the uh, general populace and particularly to the media. The PSC maintains that so far, the death toll from the COVID-19 vaccine has been below 3,000 as the committee works to disseminate millions of vaccines to as many communities as possible. Gloria Umezuke, Channel Television News. Meanwhile, dozens of staff working with the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, were prevented from gaining access into their offices today as the agency enforces Operation Show Your COVID-19 Vaccination Card or the PCR negative test result on staff of the commission in Abuja. 
Secretary to the Commission, Mr. George Ekungu, who led the enforcement team, told journalists that any staff who refuses to comply with the directive to show proof of vaccination or a COVID-19 negative test result done within 72 hours will continue to be locked out until the Commission takes a decision on such staff. The federal government began the enforcement on the ban on December 1 this year. In River State, Governor Yesum Wiki has restated his belief that Nigeria requires a change of leadership to fulfill its potential and meet the aspiration of her people. Governor Wiki, who made a statement during the commissioning of Izingu Road in Port Harcourt, the state capital, also announced that the process to find his successor has started. The special guest at the event and Governor of Adamawa State, Umar Fintiri, commended Wiki for executing people-oriented projects. <laughs> It's day three of the series of projects commissioning to end the year in River State as Governor Yeson Wiki pushes to expand infrastructure in the state. After successfully commissioning two flyover projects recently, Governor Wiki, in company of his special guest, the Governor of Adamawa State, Umaru Fintry, are here to inaugurate the dualized Zimbu Road linking Port Hackett and Obiakbo local government areas. Commander of the Order of the Niger, Grand Celestial of River State, the power of the force. Governor Wicker says the provision of infrastructure by his administration is a key requisite in stimulating the economy, something he accuses the federal government of failing to do. This administration is doing nothing to improve the lives of the citizens. It's just story, story, story. And that was why I told our National Party chairman yesterday in Benway, I said, look, it is not easy this period that Nigeria requires change of leadership. And God has given you the opportunity to be the one that will lead for this change. And it is not going to be easy. It will be very, very difficult. But being firm, being committed, you will achieve it. Somebody was asking me today, why are you commissioning rules when today is supposed to be your birthday? And I answered, the day said that a day for day is your birthday, don't walk. Birthday is it for you to rest. If today is my birthday, thank God, let me also use it, commit to the service of our people. My leaders came to me to wish me happy birthday. And I also tell them, thank you. I also had a, a, a birthday gift for them. I told them, you know I'm leaving. Now we have to start consultation for who takes over. And I told them, let nobody go and spend his money on because after the consultation, we we'll all sit down and say this is a person we think that should continue where we have uh, stopped. Before commissioning the project, Governor Fintry hails Governor Wike as a reliable colleague worthy of emulation. As a politician, he has done and is still doing incredibly well for his people. For River State and its citizens, I can't wish you luck because you already have one in Governor Wiki. Your decision to elect him in 2015, which was validated with a repeat of mandate in 2019, was not done in error. This I can attest to even as a visitor to the state. Constructed a civil road. It then commissions the road. The Zimbu Road, in addition to the already commissioned flyovers, is expected to ease traffic within the Portacot metropolis. Meanwhile, Governor Wiki has sacked the State Commissioner for Health, Professor Princewell Chike. The Governor announced the sack at the State Executive Council chambers during a courtesy visit by officials of the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, who were in Government House to brief him on their national conference holding in Port Harcourt. According to him, the sacked commissioner solely approved the hosting of the conference without recourse to due process, and he only learned about the conference through a text message. 
Governor Wike further claims that the poor execution of plan by the Commissioner for Health brought his administration to disrepute. Well, that's all from the nation's capital. Back to you, Ijoma. Thanks a lot, Terry. Still ahead on the news at 10, MTN Nigeria and Mathab Communications Limited win the slots for the 5G spectrum in the auction by the Nigeria Communications Commission. And that will be on Business News. Do join us again. Welcome back to the news at 10. The Oba of Bini Oba Ewara II today received the legal documents of the deed of transfer of the return of the bronze cockerel and the Oba bronze head recently handed over to Nigeria in the United Kingdom. The legal documents were perfected at the palace of the Oba of Bini when signatories to the documents appended their signatures in the presence of the royal family, traditional rulers from different parts of Nigeria, as well as friends and well-wishers of the Bini monarch. The Nigerian High Commissioner to the UK, who also appended his signature, says he's already in physical possession of the bronzes, but according to English law, a deed of transfer was imperative. The signed documents were eventually officially handed over to the Oba, and this comes as Oba Ewari marks his fifth anniversary of his coronation. The Emir of Kanu, other traditional rulers from different parts of the country, Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, the Chairman of Culture and Heritage of the House of Representatives, various dance troops, friends and well-wishers joined the Oba of Benin for this historic event. <laughs> The Nigeria High Commissioner to the UK explains the essence of the deed of transfer and makes it clear that the items will be domiciled at the palace. The formal return of historical artworks to Bikini Kingdom signifies a breakthrough in the desire of Nigerians and indeed Africans to repossess the African artworks currently domiciled outside their places of origin. Signatories to the deed, including His Royal Majesty Obai II, append their signatures. His Royal Majesty, our highly revered father, is now appending his very prestigious signature on the documents. Abba, 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 says that a Benin Real Museum that will be accessible to all will be established to keep returning looted artifacts. Today marks the watershed in our efforts to retrieve the bronzes, ivories, and other works of art which were removed from this palace in 1897. Other works of art with uh, religious spiritual and aesthetic significance to be named. We removed from this palace in 1897. Today, though, is not a day to open old wounds. The Chairman of Culture and Heritage of the House of Representatives, representing Oedo Federal Constituency, reaffirms his support to the fight for the return of looted artifacts. Today is the beginning of this return under your reign and my prayer is that we urge all other countries willing and still here to make up their mind to return this artifact to please do so and follow suit to return this artifact to where they belong, the palace of the Oba of Benin. The Oba said he intends to set up a committee which will include the Nobel laureate Professor Wally Shoinka as Board of Trustees for the Royal Museum of Sazobaza Channel's Television News. 
Enodeb Energy, an indigenous oil and gas company in Nigeria, has unveiled a 120-ton storage LPG plant in Abuja. During the unveiling, the chief executive officer of the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation Limited, Mele Kiari, says the new plant is a testament to the enabling business environment being created by the federal government. The Emadeb gas plant is an automated plant that can refuel a 12.5 cylinder in about 60 seconds. It's a decade of gas as declared by the federal government. And at the distilled level, an Nigerian business entity has keyed into gas domestication and energy security with this newly built purpose-fit liquefied petroleum gas plant in Abuja. The strategy here is people-centric. Emadeb gas plant is located in one of Abuja's fast developing area, Lokogoma district, with over 100 estates, and the company says it is ready to bridge the cooking gas gap. To do the honors of unveiling this plant is the CEO of Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NMPC Limited, Malam Mele uh, To the glory of God and our great country, I commissioned this uh, facility, comfort to our people and our country. This is one of the very many steps that we have to take to ensure that gas is made available to our people. We are aware that a number of institutions and companies are doing this across the country and we are accelerating this in line with Mr. President's objective to make this the decade of gas. And one of the many ways you have to do is you have to have facilities like this for auto gas combustion. Uh, and also for making sure that the LPG is easily accessible by the people. So we think that it's a very right step. This company itself has promised to make six more of these facilities within the shortest period of time. And, and ultimately, uh, we know that this will, will serve the purpose that uh, we think is right direction. By every stretch of international and industrial standards, even much more, Emadeb says it has carefully attended to details at this LPG plant. Sitting on a 600 square meters of space, the Emadeb gas facility also embeds an auto gas where cars that run on gas can refill. And if you want to convert your car to gas propelled engine, you can have that converted here also. So we're partnering with companies where we know that uh, we can process our gas locally, at the same time support the local LPG market and support the other energy market in terms of um, institutions like electricity and, um, and the LPG um, distribution across um, board in Nigeria. Market forces in recent times have seen the price of LPG on the rise owing to surge in demand. This gas plant, with assurances of support from NMPC, will mop up substantial percentage of demands. Emadev says six more locations will be unlocked soon. Olu Phillips, Charles Television News. For the rest of the business news, here's Anne Waudu. Thanks a lot, Ijoma. Hello and welcome to Business News. Let's begin with the federal government's proposal amendment to the Finance Bill 2021, which will enable digital companies become value-added tax collectors for the Federal Inland Revenue Service. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, who made this known today at the public hearing organized by the House of Representatives Committee on Finance in Abuja, says the bill, if passed by the lawmakers and assented to by President Mohamed Buhari, will reduce ambiguity and restrict VAT obligations to digital non-resident companies. She also gave a breakdown of the revenue generated from both the oil and the non-oil sector of the Nigerian economy as at September this year. The mobile telecommunications company MTN and MAFAP Communications Limited have emerged winners of the deployment of the 5G spectrum auctioned by the Nigerian Communications Commission. The winners for the two slots emerged after 11 rounds of bid among three bidding companies. The third bidder is Airtel Networks Limited. According to the Director, Public Affairs at the Commission, the two winners got the nod on the Commission at $273.6 million. The Commission fixed the base price at $197.4 million. Let's now head to the local market where it started on a positive note for the week following gains in the share price of MTN Nigeria and 22 other advancers. Laddie Williams has the details.
Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Well, the first trading day of the week and it's a solid start for the equities as the bull shows up with a solid presence. The all share index jumped over 1% as the value of listed equities gained over 200 billion naira. Well, the activity levels were quite weak compared to last uh, trading session. A volume of shares uh, transacted to the 229.64 uh, million units valued at 3.28 uh, billion naira in 4,000 426 deals. Sectoral performance was broadly negative as most key sectors were down, leaving thus the industrial index as the sole gainer. Let's take a look at the top trades that we see stocks of Unity Bank, Universal Insurance Company, and FBN Holdings were the most traded by volume. Over to the gainers counter, we see Maya PLC led the counter up 9% to close at 36 cobble. You also see FTN Cocoa on that list. While the trio of National Salt Company, Cornerstone Insurance, and WAPIC Insurance led the losers counter. It's a nice way to start the week as the All Share Index crossed the 42,000 level. Let's see if the bull keeps the momentum throughout the week. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Laddie Williams. Back to you. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Wawadu. It's back to you, Gemma. You first, first bank. Thanks a lot, Anne. Still ahead on the news at 10, death toll from the tornadoes that swept through some states in the United States, likely to surpass 100. And we'll have more international news from our London studio. Do stay with us. Welcome back. The death toll from the powerful tornadoes that devastated towns in Kentucky is likely to surpass 100 as hopes of finding survivors wane. Hissam and Pusey with One World in Five. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. The death toll from powerful tornadoes that devastated towns in Kentucky is likely to pass 100, the governor says, as hope of finding survivors diminish. Drone shots in the city of Mayfield show the sheer devastation left by the storms. In some areas, the mangled debris stretches as far as the eye can see. President Joe Biden has declared a major federal disaster in Kentucky and ordered federal aid to be made available to the hardest hit areas. We are still hoping as we move forward for some miracles um, to find more people and to hopefully have a lower death count than what we expect. I wish I understood why well, we've gotten hit with the pandemic, the historic ice storm, flooding, and now the worst tornado in our history all in a span of 19 months. France and the Netherlands are seeking to find a common European Union approach over a diplomatic boycott of the 2022 Olympic Games in China. However, diplomats seen here talking in Brussels ahead of an EU Foreign Affairs Council say any decision is unlikely to be reached soon. EU diplomats say Hungary, China's closest ally in the bloc, would never support a diplomatic boycott, but there could be a consensus among the remaining 26 members. China reacted angrily to the US, UK and Australia deciding not to send diplomats, saying countries shouldn't be playing politics with sport. Two cargo ships have collided in the Baltic Sea between the Danish island of Bonholm and the southern Swedish city of Ystad, leaving two people missing. The incident happened in foggy conditions between a 55-metre Danish ship and a 90-metre British registered Scott carrier. The former capsized and is still currently upside down. A rescue operation was launched for two missing people. One person has been killed and 14 injured in a shooting at a vigil near Houston in Texas. A large crowd had gathered for a celebration of life when a vehicle approached and someone in it opened fire. The sheriff said that of the 14 injured, three were in a critical condition. Rescuers have continued the search for two people still missing under the rubble of houses destroyed by a suspected gas explosion in Sicily.
At least seven people have now been confirmed dead following the blast. Two people were pulled alive from the rubble on Sunday morning, but there's little hope for those still missing. The office of the South African president says he is receiving treatment after testing positive for COVID-19. In a statement, they said Cyril Ramaphosa has mild symptoms and is isolating in Cape Town. Thank you very much. You can stand for the president. Mr Ramaphosa started feeling unwell on Sunday after attending the funeral of the former president, F.W. de Klerk. He has delegated all responsibilities to his deputy president, David Mabuza, for the next week. The West African regional bloc ECOWAS has expressed strong concerns over delays in Mali's transition to civilian rule. Colonel Asimi Goita seized power in Mali, detaining the transitional president Bar Ndor and Prime Minister. ECOWAS say there would be additional economic sanctions if no concrete progress was made to hold fresh elections scheduled for late February. Harnas Sandhu of India has been named Miss Universe in a ceremony marking the 70th anniversary of the international pageant. Miss Universe is... India! The 21-year-old burst into tears as she was announced the winner. Israel hosted the contest in the Red Sea resort of Elat amid a surge in COVID-19 cases. Sandhu urged people around the world to get vaccinated and help keep the borders open. And finally, a British strongman is on a mission to secure 100 world records by his 75th birthday in March. Dressed in a Santa outfit, John Evans has been breaking records for various head balancing feats for years. Here, balancing a chimney on his head, he has dozens of accomplishments that are recognised by the Guinness Book of World Records. In the process, he has raised more than £250,000 for charity. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos. Many thanks, Simon. As part of its contribution to sports development in Undo State, the Tola Awoshika Foundation has successfully launched the Tola Awoshika Football Cup in Akure, the state capital. The competition, which seeks to encourage sportsmanship among the youth of Undo State through football, will be a yearly competition within the state. The Maiden Tola Awoshika Football Cup brings together dignitaries within and outside Undo State. And this includes the Deputy Governor, Loki Aida representative of the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dare, ex-international JJ Okocha, and popular hip-hop star David O, friends and families of the sponsor, Ola Woshika. This initiative has shown to everyone your love and passion for the development of youth through sports. Let me, therefore, you use this forum to, on behalf of the state government, call on all well-meaning on those state indigenous, philanthropists, corporate organizations, and individuals to emulate Tola Awosika Foundation. The ministry will support Tola Awosika Football Cup 100% because it is in line with its mandate and its initiative, an initiative of this program. Now to the field, Ondo City and Akura City had the privilege of being the first teams to kickstart the Tola Awoshika Football Cup. At the end of regulation time, it was goalless, and the organizers decided to present the mating trophy and checks to both teams. And reigning European champions Chelsea FC will play French side Lille in the last 16 after the draw for the knockout stages took place for a second time earlier today in the UEFA Champions League. A technical problem caused an error in the initial draw, which UEFA said had been declared void. A Premier League champions Man City face Portugal Sport in Lisbon, while six-time winners Liverpool play three-time winners Inter Milan. Man United face Atletico Madrid. And the standout tie of the game, Real Madrid come against PSG. 
And that's Post News. Thanks a lot, Ayo Tunde. And the main news again. Security operatives today rescued one of the two traditional rulers kidnapped in Imu State yesterday after trailing their abductors to a criminal hideout in Anambra State. That's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot for staying with us. I'm Ijo Mahunyato. Do have a good night.